All right, boys and girls, before we start talking about your next project, which has to do with animation, it, it's important that we kind of talk about the history behind animation and pay tribute to the person that is really the one who started to break down um, animations into separate frames or separate photos, and that is Edward Moybridge. So he is the grandfather of motion pic picture. So who is he exactly? He was an English photographer, important for his groundbreaking work in photographic studies of motion and in motion picture projection. Edward was known as the grandfather of motion pictures. Moybridge's experiments began in 1872 of photographic gatherings of animals. His first efforts were unsuccessful due to his camera lacking a fast shutter. So you can see there's an ostrich below there that he was capturing frame by frame, photo by photo, to show its movement. So hopefully you can start to see the connection between an animation, frame by frame slowly changing, to eventually show movement. Animal locomotion. Edward's first study, The Horse in Motion, in 1882, was regarded as the first ever moving picture, which led to foundations for the modern cinema. The Horse in Motion is a series of galloping racehorse, series of a galloping racehorse, which was the first animal ever to be shown in a movie image format. This experiment proved without a doubt something that no one had ever seen, which was that a horse lifts all four hooves off the ground at a particular point while running. Pretty cool, you can see that image there. So here are his all of his separate frames, all of his separate photos that he was able to capture. And again, if you stream those all together in a movie, it would look like the horse was running. So we are gonna be able to see that. So there's a video, I'm gonna pop over to the video, have you guys watch that, and then we'll come back to the presentation. All right guys, now that we've had a chance to look at the history of animations and uh, motion pictures throughout time, now let's look specifically at GIFs and the history on GIFs, right? Some people say GIF, some people say GIF, um, I sometimes mix it up, so it's whatever you want to go with. So let's look at the modern history of them. So the first GIF, which again is an acronym, it stands for Graphics Interchange Format. So it's that specific file type. It was invented in 1987 at a CompuServe by Steve Wilty, and there is the first GIF ever. So it's that airplane that you see there on the right, kind of going through the clouds really quickly. That is the first GIF that was ever created. So this file format, it's compressed, so it was ideal for sharing images across a slow modem connection at the time. So you guys are too young to remember dial-up internet, but it was really, really slow. And so if you wanted to share an image, wanted to share a regular photo, it would take forever to do that. And so the, the invention of the GIF was created so that you could share images, the quality was not lost, and you could share them quickly and easily over those really slow connections. And so there you can see on the bottom, I'm sure you've noticed it by now, the first viral GIF, that's the dancing baby, and this one was created in 1996. So um, GIFs are, again, these loops, these images on a loop, and they are limited to 256 colors. So again, compresses that file size, makes it smaller. Whereas a JPEG, which is like a regular photo, so if you just snap a photo on your iPad using the camera app, um, that's gonna be called a JPEG file. And that is gonna consist of 16.7 million colors. So you can see why GIFs are so much smaller file size because they're, they're so much simpler. All right, so looking at the timeline of GIFs. So in 1990, right, we can see there's, maybe some of you guys know this, peanut butter jelly time. There's that dancing banana that went along with that. I remember that. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys would have ever seen that, but there were a lot of GIFs that were just kind of like classic looking animations with transparent backgrounds, like you can see there. And then in the middle, as we get into the beginning of the 21st century, GIFs begin to contain text images for um, social media sites like MySpace, which is something that came before Facebook. 
and Instagram and all of that. There was MySpace before, so we can see GIFs that were popular during that time for those type of platforms. And then present day, I'm sure you guys have seen ones like that um, video of that little boy being interviewed there where it's a looped sequence of a video um, where there's text on top. And so, you know, those things often become like viral sensations. And so there we have kind of the history of the GIF. So again, let's back it up and talk again. What exactly is a GIF? So it's an image that's been encoded using this certain file format. So it's a graphics interchange format. So it has multiple frames that have been put together into a single image that can be played in an automatic sequence that's animated, right? So it's that, that loop that just automatically goes around. It's different from a, a video file because a video file, you hit play, it plays from the start to the end and then stops. Whereas a GIF is really an image file. It's not a video file and um, it just continuously plays forever and ever and ever. And it's just like a small set of different frames you guys will be making um, those frames. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about if that doesn't make sense to you right now. Um, but this might help make that connection. If you've ever seen one of those little flip books where an image seems to animate, where the pages flip by, a, an animated GIF is like the digital version of that. So think of each one of those pages as a different frame on that animation. And when you stream them together really quickly, it looks like that thing is moving. And that's what we're that's what we're going to be creating in a digital format. So here are some gifts that I found that I thought were cool that I just kind of um, found just you know going onto Google and looking up gifts. So again, all of these these are short animations. There's just a a few frames and they're just on a loop, right? It's they were saved as this special file format that just allows them to loop like that over and over and over endlessly. Okay, so what exactly will you be making? A GIF, of course. You are going to be making a few different GIFs. The first GIF that we are going to be creating is an animation of your name. So there's mine right there. Um, I'm gonna make something even different. I'll show you some other options in the app that we use. And you guys can use different colors and things. And this is gonna help you. This is a really, really, really simple GIF. This is gonna help you get comfortable with the app then we'll be making another type of animation after that. Our second assignment will be to grab a still photo. So you can see here on the right, there's a still photo of a plant, and then you can add an animation over top of that. And then after that, you guys can kind of make whatever type of animation that you want, whatever kind of GIF you want. All right, so if you haven't done so already, you need this app. You need the animation and drawing app by doing and um, if you haven't already downloaded it onto your iPad, I need you to go into the self-service app down there on the bottom left. You can see what the self-service looks like. So go into that. Now I wanna point out that there are two um, animation apps with a pink squid on it, like what you can see is on the board now. Um, so you wanna make sure that the one that you're downloading is the one that you see here. It says AD for animation and drawing. So go ahead and download that and then we will get right to work in class.